All right, so let's talk about how this disease is spread. SARS-CoV-2, as we've mentioned previously, binds to ACE2, angiotensin-converting enzyme 2 receptors, which are expressed in the epithelial cells of the mouth, trachea, and lungs, or the respiratory tract. The primary mode of transmission is inhalation of the virus in aerosol form into the lungs. The secondary mode of transmission is through contact of contaminated hands with the mouth or nasal mucous membranes. Transmission can also occur by contact of the virus to the eyes, but this presents pretty low risk for normal citizens. Coughs expel droplets from the lungs and the mouth. These droplets are mostly water, but they can also carry virions. The droplet sizes have a bimodal distribution from about 100 nanometers or about 0.1 microns to about 500 microns or half a millimeter with modes at about 0.34 microns and about 16 microns. For reference, the diameter of SARS-CoV-2 is about 0.12 microns. Then after traveling some distance and also shrinking due to evaporation, these droplets can either settle onto surfaces or they can be inhaled. Virions deposited onto surfaces can transmit disease by being brought into contact with the mouth or the nose. It's not perfectly known how long SARS-CoV-2 can last on surfaces, but other coronaviruses can last up to nine days. Some early studies are showing that this virus might be able to last uh, about two days on surfaces. The common mechanisms for this occurring are touching contaminated surfaces and then touching the mouth or shaking hands with somebody who coughed into their hand. Common solutions for this are disinfecting surfaces with wipes and sprays, washing hands with soap and water, and disinfecting hands with alcohol. Coronaviruses are one of the easiest types of viruses to kill because they are enveloped viruses. They're enveloped with a lipid layer from the original cell membrane that they came from. As a result, washing with soap is really, really effective because the fatty nonpolar side of the soap molecule rips apart the virus envelope. Surfaces can also be decontaminated using bleach, isopropyl alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, and there's a list of products that are effective for this that the EPA has created. So let's discuss aerial transmission. Large sized droplets, things uh, about 10 microns or greater, follow largely ballistic trajectories. Medium sized droplets settle out and fall quickly while small droplets that we call aerosols, things of the order of one micron or smaller, can remain suspended for really, really long amounts of time. As an example, a 500 micron particle has a terminal velocity of about three meters per second. So from an initial height of two meters, about the height of an average person, at terminal velocity, it'll settle to the ground in about 660 milliseconds, a little over half a second. For contrast, a one micron particle falls at a rate of about three times 10 to the minus five meters per second. So from the same height, it'll take about 20 hours for it to settle to the ground. Aerosols, these one micron and below particles, can remain suspended for very, very long amounts of time. As a result, the trajectory of aerosols is not dominated by their fall rate in still air, but instead by the paths that the local air currents are pushing them. As a result, in order to keep these aerosols concentration low, you need good ventilation. Large droplets follow mostly a ballistic trajectory and they can carry for about one to two meters. Cough velocities can reach up to about 20 meters per second and there's a bunch of parameters that you can use for trying to compute the ballistic trajectory um, but the trajectories are dictated by nonlinear differential equations, which encourage the use of numerical solutions, such as using an Excel spreadsheet. And so that's what's shown here, ballistic trajectories, assuming an initial velocity of 20 meters per second laterally um, in still air with no evaporation. Large particles, such as 500 micron particles, can travel farther, but they're much less infectious because they just land on things. They're, they're unable to enter the respiratory tract and alveolar sacs. 
Large particles, therefore, transmit primarily by deposition onto surfaces and subsequent contact with mucous membranes. Medium-sized particles, things on the order of 100 microns or less, can be inhaled and are therefore more dangerous. But as you can see, they don't travel anywhere near as far. So as a result, the safe distance is usually regarded as about two meters. However, this is based on the assumption of ballistic transport, which is naive. Aerosols and coughs, one micron and below, or perhaps up to 10 microns, are carried by a multi-phase turbulent buoyant cloud, and they can cover really long distances, several meters. The way they work is this. The cough cloud as it exits the mouth and trains air as it travels, allowing it to carry further than a simple viscous drag model will predict, and aerosols are carried with it. In addition, the buoyancy of that warm air can cause it to go upward. And so therefore, coughing down is not protective, and aerosols can potentially rise to reach the vents of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. So because of all this, aerosols can go substantially farther than larger particles. These aerosols are subsequently transported by ambient air currents. For droplets below 100 microns, contamination range rises monotonically, exceeding two meters. These small particles are the most dangerous because they can enter the alveolar sacs. The alveolar duct's diameter is about 200 microns. Anything smaller than that is capable of penetrating and entering into the alveolar sacs of the lungs. In practice, the droplet range will depend on many very unpredictable factors, like how fast the cough is, how deeply the person breathed when they were coughing, the tidal volume, as well as the mouth geometry during the cough. Generally speaking, though, you should stay far, far away from people who are coughing, especially if they have poor cough etiquette, because cough aerosols can transmit long distances. Now, the probability that any particular cough droplet will transmit disease depends on the rate of viral shedding into the bodily secretions. Unlike the original SARS virus in 2003, SARS-CoV-2, the current virus, has really high shedding rates during the first week of symptoms like that, suggesting that it has already begun shedding before the onset of symptoms. This indicates that SARS-CoV-2 is transmitted even by people who haven't started to show symptoms yet. Experiments have shown that the peak viral load of SARS-CoV-2 is about a thousand times higher than that of SARS-CoV, the one back in 2003, occurring about five days after the onset of symptoms. Some people have suggested that with such a high virion concentration, this could mean that transmission is possible without coughing, but just by breathing. Because of all of this, reducing r naught for this disease is uniquely difficult due to its high early viral load. As a result, social distancing is necessary. We have to stay away from each other. It's not just enough to identify sick people and isolate them. All human proximity has to be limited. The use of masks and respirators helps a lot. If you have one, wear it. However, do not hoard them because other people, namely healthcare workers and vulnerable populations, desperately need them and they need them a lot more than you do. Other than that, hygiene and disinfection will aid in the reduction of contact transmission. And if you see somebody with poor cough etiquette, shame them into correcting their cough technique. In the next video, we'll talk about what we as individuals can do to limit the spread of the disease.